I'm Dave from Thomas Jacks. Ever heard of pics for our Ranger thermal monoculars? There's a Ranger R425, a Ranger R435. There's also a Ranger R625, a Ranger R635, and there's a Ranger R650. The R425 and R435 on the left have a 384 by 288 12 micron sensor while the R625, 635 and 650 on the right all have a whopping 640 by 512 12 micron sensor. But with the different lens sizes and different sensors, how do you choose which one is right for you? Well, that's easy, if we show you with the first of three scenes I've got for you. This is where I'm sat with all five different ranges, and this is what we're looking at. The large conifers and golfers are 350 meters away, and here's what I can see in thermal with each of the five ranges. We're in white hot mode, so the warmest objects, the golfers, are easy to pick out in white. The sky is cold, so it's black. And all the foliage and fauna is shades of grey, depending on the small amounts of heat it reflects or emits. The first thing to notice if I freeze frame the action right there is the relative size of the golfers through each ranger. Let me explain why they're different sizes to help you choose the right ranger for whatever you need. There's two factors influencing the scale of the objects in each view. The sensor and the native magnification from the different lens options. Which makes the golfers appear smaller in the 35mm lens versus a 50mm and smaller still in the 25mm lens, for the same sensor at least. But these on the right have a sensor that's 66% larger than the ones on the left that's this much larger, with hundreds of thousands more individual temperature sensing pixels for more refined tone and detail which can help you identify things a little easier. And the other thing a bigger sensor can deliver is a bigger field of view with more foreground and more width to make spotting across large areas easier covering more ground even before you've moved your head. So while you're concentrating on the golfers, if something of interest enters the edge of the scene, like a rabbit or a fox or another person, you can see it first with a bigger field of view. Now let's compare these five different ranges with another scene. The impressive looking building is at 400 meters. The tall monument on the horizon is at about half a mile. And through all the Pixar Rangers, we can see that bloke on the hill. In some, you can also just about make out his dog too. But all of these ranges are equipped with an 8 times digital zoom. Let me show you what that does. And I'll freeze the action here, so you can see the extra detail you get with a bigger 640x512 sensor when zoomed in. Looking at the stonework, the rangers on the right maintain a crisp edge definition and there's more levels of shading from each stone's subtly different temperature. If you're looking for people or animals, that extra detail will help you identify what you're looking at at bigger distances. But does a big sensor become less significant at close range? Well, there's only one way to find out. To start with, here's the two 35mm. I'll freeze things to isolate the difference between the two sensor sizes at close range. The dog walkers, by the way, are about 70 meters. And although the image size is the same through the viewfinder, I'll just adjust things again to make the pixels the same size for a more representative viewing experience from the different sensors. There's certainly more detail on the R635, but at closer ranges, the main benefit is the wider field of view. Let's bring the other ranges in, and you can see they all deliver a clear, identifiable image of the people and dogs at 70 meters plus even through some light vegetation. Now if I skip forward a bit to visually demonstrate the difference in field of view, watch closely and see how long it takes the runner to cross the frame. It's only 20 meters away, but that's noticeably different. Especially if I slow it down and add a counter to quantify the difference. There you have it. If a wide field of view is important to you, this one, in our experiment, looks like it gives you nearly double the view of some of the other options. If you'd like to see other videos like this, subscribe. Or for more on Picks for our Rangers, visit thomasjacks.co.uk. These are the Picks for our Ranger thermal monoculars. And I'm Dave from Thomas Jacks. Thanks for watching.